Today's episode, 10,000 kilograms of radio, the best of season two. Let me tell you something about Canada as an American, okay? Oh, okay. This, this ought to be good. Recently, I, I was driving in Canada. I was actually way east. I was in New Brunswick. Mm-hmm. You, you were driven from the States? Yeah. We don't call them that, but yes. <laughs> we call it America. Right. Okay. Well, okay. We call it the States. Right. So I go across the border, and I get this brochure from the, um, the border guards, and it explains to me how to drive in the metric system. Mm-hmm. And I've never been great at math, particularly at simple math. Yeah. So <clears throat> just to be clear, I am someone who believes in safe driving. So I wasn't going to dig through my bags while I was driving 80 miles an hour and take out my calculator. So I just did it in my head. Mm-hmm. And I figured out that I should be going a minimum of 160 and a maximum of 138. Miles. Miles per hour. Right. According to your calculation. Right. So there I was, going along, trying to keep it, because I didn't want to go below 116, because, you know, sometimes they give you a ticket if you go too slow. So you felt you had to maintain a speed of, uh, a consistent speed of 116 miles an hour. Right, which is actually not that easy to do. No, it isn't. That's pretty, that's, uh, that's pretty fast. And at a few points, the Trans-Canada slows down through some little lobster fishing villages, and it was pretty hairy going through some of those villages. I imagine. But then when I got to my destination, I parked the car, mm-hmm. and went to bed, you know, it was the next day. And when I came out, the drive shaft of the car had actually seized. It just went, clink, and <laughs> just fell off the car. <laughs> <laughs> from, from going 116 miles an hour. So but let me just explain to you why I'm annoyed at that. Mm-hmm. With all America's problems in the world, everything is in miles per hour. It's very simple. The minute you go off into Never Netherland, it's like going down the rabbit hole, and suddenly everything's gone crazy. And it's not just the miles per hour. It's everything. When you go to the store, you have to buy in grams. It's maddening. No, it's it's just the, it's the way it's it's the way that it's done here. In fact, it's the way that it's done in 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 most of the world. You know what the metric system is great for? What's that? Cocaine. From what I've read in books and seen in movies, people snort a gram of cocaine at a time. So there you have it. Your country is essentially built for the convenience of drug dealers. Uh, Do you want to be having your friend hang from some shower head while you're getting cut up with a chainsaw trying to convert between ounces and grams? If I was going to sell cocaine, which, by the way, I don't, mm-hmm. I would go to Canada. So we, I don't want any misunderstandings. So, so what, 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 what are you arguing here, that the metric system encourages drug abuse? Or what are you arguing, that people should drive three-fifths as fast as they drive in America? No, it benefits I'm, by that. I mean, I'm just saying that it yeah, is Everywhere you go, you get there late. Okay, look. Uh, oh, okay, I'll tell you what. I challenge you right now to a metric conversion off. Okay, what is that? Uh, I'll give you a length or mm-hmm. a width or a something, mm-hmm. and you have to convert it. Yeah, but you see, we, you, you see, you, you're, you're using the wrong paradigm here. Why? The, the because because, because you think no, because you're thinking in terms of miles. We're not thinking in terms of miles. Yeah, but that, we're not that's thinking that's in terms exactly of that. Point. I don't have to figure out how far a mile is because I know it's a mile. It's none of this nonsense about like, oh, I need a graduated cylinder and go home and like pour my coleslaw into it to figure out exactly what I'm talking about. I eat a cup, it's a cup. I eat a pound, a pound. And besides, have you, you're familiar with Shakespeare. Yes, I am. What did he talk about, a pound of flesh or 2.2 pounds? Give them an inch, take a mile? That sounds really poetic when you say, give them 2.54 centimeters and take 0.78 of a mile or whatever your meter is. Okay, I think, I think you know, you're... you're, you're you ever you're, seen a Shakespeare play measure for measure? You think he was talking about kilometers? I don't think so. I don't think, I, but I don't think that's integral to like. I don't think you know what I mean to the meaning of How the play. About the delightful Bruce Willis comeback movie, The Whole Nine Yards. Mm-hmm. Do you even know what a yard is? That just confuses you, right? When you hear a movie title called The Whole Nine Yards. I, I'm picturing you going to the movies with your little slide rule, or your calculator, and you sit in the dark with a little flashlight, and you and your Canadian friends are trying to figure out what what could they possibly mean by this movie, The Whole Nine Yards. And then you come out with some metric equivalent, the whole 11.25 meters. Which, by the way, isn't even an expression. It's so sad. It's really sad when you get down to it. You're missing out on such a richness in life. Listen, I love Canada. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. Metric system. Get out of here. Metric system. Yeah, but okay. L- l- let Let's just look at this logically, okay? Don't you think a system of t- uh, take Celsius and Fahrenheit? Don't you think it makes more sense to like have something very concrete, like the point at which water freezes, and make that your point zero, and then the point where water boils being a hundred? That's how I. That's the two bookends to my day. Every morning I make an ice cube, and every morning I boil tea. What's the difference? What temperature ice freezes? What do we live on Venus? How about we make a system where you can tell me, are you going to be cold with a sweater or jacket or shirt? In your system, you have, what, 
a total of 5, 10 degrees to cover the whole spread of human temperature of livability it's range. A, it's a very logical system. You have, to, you have to admit that. Here's what I'll admit. It's a terrible system used by Canadians. How's that for a compromise? How many weeks do you have in your month up there? We have the same amount. Ten days in a month. Ten loonies in a goonie. Okay, Gregor, I'm, I'm going to let you go now. Okay, I, okay. Yeah, I got your work done. Yeah, yeah, you, 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 you do have your, me work done. Your out. metric system is very nice. I didn't mean to offend you. Anyway, I was calling you about a favor. You want a favor from me? Yeah. So remember earlier I told you about my car broke down? Yeah. So they couldn't fix it while I was there, mm-hmm. and I wound up leaving it in Fredericton. Do you know where that is? It's, it's in New Brunswick. Right. So here's the favor. Yeah. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. I just need you to pick up my car, which is now fixed, and next time I'm in Montreal, I'll, I'll pick it up from you. Okay, uh, Gregor, do you, do you realize that Fredericton is like over 800 kilometers from Montreal? That's not far, is it? No, that, 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 that's, that's, that's very far. Very far? I'm not talking about walking there. You know, in America, we don't make a big deal about things. That's why we're the greatest superpower on Earth, bar none. Gregor, you're talking, seriously, that's like a two-day drive. I can't do that. Anyway, I don't know how long it takes you to drive 800 kilometers. All I can tell you is when I had converted my miles, it was only taking me like an hour for 500 kilometers, so it shouldn't be more No, than that's like a whole day's drive. Oh, let me actually teach you an American expression. It's called pedal to the metal, my main man. So come on, can't you go to Fredericton? I can't go. What are you talking about? How far can it be? You just go into Fredericton, ask for Doug. There's only one auto shop on the Trans-Canada out there. What is this? I, I call you and say, can you go to Fredericton, and I get a whole metric song and dance. A whole long answer. Much longer than they get in America, but a simple answer suffice. That's how we get things done around here. Straight to the point. Short and sweet. Yeah, and what kind of name is Fredericton anyway? And Moncton. Moncton just sounds like a variation on Montreal. You only have like seven cities in Canada. You think you could make up a new name when you got to Moncton. Sounds like you're mumbling and have potatoes in your mouth. Moncton. And then you have two St. John or St. John and St. John. What up with that? You have just reached the rejection line. Unfortunately, the person who gave you this number does not want to see you or speak to you again. Please stay on the line for our menu. If you would like to hear a sad song to help ease you through this difficult time, press 1. If you would like to weep bitter tears of betrayal, press 2 and wait for the beep. If you would like to speak with one of our rejection specialists, please press 3. Hi, and how may I help you today? I I, I was calling to speak to Amy. Uh, no, a- Amy's not here. You've reached the rejection line. No, 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 I, I, I heard. I'm sorry, I must, I must have misdialed. You haven't misdialed, Amy. And is your roommate? I don't understand. You have reached the rejection line. You're a very special person with some fine attributes, and just because this person does not wish to have anything to do with you does not mean that you do not have any value as a human being. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm having a hard time with this. I, I actually kind of... What's your, what's your name? Stuart. 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 Um, I presume you met this Amy in a bar last night. Yeah. Yeah. And she probably gave you her phone number, quote unquote. Well, yeah. I mean, it's been a long time. She gave you our phone number under the guise of it being her phone number. I'm really sorry. Uh, well, who who are you? What's, I'm what's... a rejection specialist, and I'm here to comfort you. Bravo! Doing a real good job. Well, it's my job. Yeah. You do it well. I, I'm uh, I'm deeply comforted right now. Dude, I mean this happens all the time. I mean I get this happens all the time. Sure, it I, happens no, all the I time. Guys, hundred... guys meet meet someone they like in a bar and then they get the rejection line. This happens all the time. I, I don't even know. This is ridiculous. I'm a human being. This is not how you treat someone that you met in a bar and had a deep conversation with for three hours, Stuart. I'm sure that you plumbed incredible depths with Amy in yeah, the bar we last talked. night. We connected. I'm sure the connection was extremely strong, as evidenced by this phone call, but... Uh, I don't like to come into someone's office and tell them that they're, you know, incompetent or anything, but, uh, you know, not, uh, not doing such a good job. You are actually stretching the parameters of my script. 
Well, I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry to have okay, to challenge you. Okay, here's some comfort. You're a fabulous guy. I'm sure you've got a lush, thick head of hair and a chiseled body and cheekbones to die for. I'm sure you make a lot of money in a fantastic industry and that your whole future is ahead of you and that you've just bought a great new condo that any woman would love to move into. I'm sure that you're fabulous. Okay, that's not necessary. I don't need Women like condos. I don't you have one? Thank you. Okay, I'm not asking for, for to be anointed the greatest guy who ever lived. I don't need that. All right, stop. I'm I'm not a bad guy. Okay, I know that. All right, that's I'm why sure I'm. you're not a bad guy. I don't. Look, I'll help you through this. I don't deserve this. What I don't happened? Have, I'm a fun guy. Okay, like fun, fun, super fun, Stuart. What happened? Well, you know, we were we were we were at the bar, right? And uh, we started talking, and uh, eventually, uh, you know, I, I asked her if I could buy her a drink. You know, I mean, that's how these things start, right? Often, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. you know? yeah. You know, I was breaking out some of the jokes, you know? Right, what kind of jokes? Knock, knock. Right, those really go a long way. No, no, knock, knock, knock. Come on, knock, knock. Who's there? Interrupting cow. Interrupting Move. cow, too. She loved it. She was laughing. She let me buy her a drink. She let me buy her a drink. We had our drink. We had the mojito, you know. And then, and then we, we moved on to the next level of enjoyment, which I, I have to say was a hell of a lot of fun. Flaming shots. Right. That was your idea? That's, of course. Right. And I, uh, I bought some for friends, too, you know. And they were laughing. They were laughing along with us, you know. Right. And Why were they laughing? Well, because, you know, because cause, cause the, the second round of flaming shots, you know, is funny. I actually spilled a little bit, and I, and I, set, my, uh, I set my shirt on fire. Uh, I mean, just a little bit, you know. But, I mean, it was fun. They were laughing. They were, everybody's having Are you fun. crazy? What do you mean? But you think that that's going to turn a woman on? You set your shirt on fire? Excuse me. Excuse me. What are they okay, doing? Let me reiterate the story to you. Okay. Okay. Wait, wait, I'm a guy. You're a girl. I'm at a bar, you're at a bar, I come up to you, I'm like, hey, cutie, how's it going? Here's some really stupid drink that I'm going to set on fire, and then I set my shirt on fire. What would you think? What, what, what is it always said about women uh, 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 being attracted to men? It doesn't say women are love... attracted to men with shirts on fire. Sense of humor. It's all about the sense of humor. She wasn't laughing at me. She was laughing with me. Why can't you see that? I don't. Know. When you go to the circus and you see the clown, are you laughing with the clown or are you laughing at the clown? You know what? You know. You know. Your problem is you're you're, you're focusing too much on this whole flaming shirt thing. It's not about the flaming shirt. Well, okay? it's, it's an a, uncommon event. It's about the laughter that resulted from the flaming shirt. It's about being humble enough to laugh at yourself. And and they were joining in my self mockery. It was it was really nice. It was a good vibe. Right. Okay. They were laughing. How are they laughing? Uh, you know, like were they like, <laughs> or were they like? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that. Yeah. Basically, you're like in you bozo, she Jane kind of territory. What? No. Yeah. No. Yes. No. So how long was she laughing for? She was laughing for a long time, you know? I mean, I even went to the bathroom for a while, and she was still laughing when I got back. I mean, that's, that's a long time. Right, with her friends. Yeah, with her friends, all, all of them. Possibly pointing. Pointing? There may have been some pointing. Right. Stuart, just think about what you're telling me. Just, you know, rewind a little bit in your brain, you know, take the heat down a bit and think about what you're telling me. Yeah. I mean, who was paying for these drinks? Or were you buying the drinks? I mean, I was uh mm -hmm. Well, I mean, yeah. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I guess right. I guess How many I, friends? Oh, there were like two, right, three, I don't know. Right. You know what? You know what? You're right. You're right. It's it's. This always happens. I'm I'm gonna die alone. I'm I I can't do it. I can't pull it off. I, I, I it's right. terrible. Okay, Stu, I'm sure you're not gonna die alone. This is really not that big a deal. Oh, I mean, look, playing the field, fish in the sea. I know you're reading from the comfort. I'm no, part no, of the I'm not. Now. I know. I know you're just reading me. from the small prints of the real losers mm -hmm. at the bottom of the. You know, like you, you, you probably never even turned that page until today. You know, you, you never seem to have that a bit page. of a self-esteem problem. But like, you know, self-esteem is one thing, and actual worth is another thing. And you know, you do seem like kind of a good time guy to me. You know, really, you're not going to die alone. You know. Knock knock jokes might be, you know, a bit mid century, but. What's your name? Julie. Well, Julie, yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, you said some nice things to me. I really appreciate it, you know? I mean, um. I don't know. I don't. I don't often hear that sort of thing. You know, it's easy to get down. Okay. On you, okay. So. Um, Stu, I can see where this is going. No, no, no. no. I'm just no. saying. I'm just saying. You know, it's 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 rare to find someone. I mean, look. I, mean, yeah. I called you, right? And you, what? Uh, maybe I can give you a call sometime. No. Hey, have a talk now. Yeah.
Let's grab a coffee now. We can go out to Jello Shop now. Go out with Jello now. The rummage sale was set up in the church basement. All the dolls were put on one table together. They started chit-chatting immediately. Dolls are social. That's what they were invented for, after all. To always be up for playing with children when no one else is. Humans can barely make out their voices when they talk. They make an almost inaudible sound that is similar to that of hair burning. It's a small noise that you assume is coming from some place far away. None of the dolls here is in particularly good shape. Everyone has lost their shoes. They wear dirty socks and their dresses have chocolate milk stains. There is no laundry for dolls to go to. Once you are dirty, you are dirty forever. You are stuck with a bad haircut into eternity. There's a doll who used to be named Mary, the doll with four fingers. She was operated on by a child with a pair of blunt scissors and black yarn. Her intestines are filled with hidden things, a key to an old diary, and a few coins from Poland. She is 50 years old, but she's got the face of a baby girl. She came in a marvelous box filled with trinkets. There were postcards of the Eiffel Tower and bottles of perfume and powder. There was a pill bottle filled with baby teeth. There were porcelain teacups with zebras and birds with winding tails on them. She came from a good time. Now she wears a dirty white coat and a blue nightgown that she borrowed from another doll 20 years before. She likes to talk about the war, about how it made everyone feel so alive. What we would do for a pair of stockings, she cries. She has long eyelashes drawn around her eyes by a child with a ballpoint pin. They give her a misty-eyed, drunk look. Next to Mary is a doll in a black dress named Clemente. She was left under the snow for an entire winter once. Once she was brought back inside, she became friends with a taxidermid rabbit in the hall. They were always pretending that they were married. He had a little piece of paper with his Latin name on it, written in black ink. He thought this was his ticket to a museum. Clemente once believed she might end up in a museum just like some other dolls she knew. But she had been wrong. She ended up here, at the rummage sale, with a price tag for three dollars on her wrist. Then there is Elsie. She is a rather cheaply made doll. She hides the information on her behind that says her date and place of birth. She can't have anyone know that she is only five years old and was made in China. There is a German doll named Carmen. She talks about how in Germany all the dolls wear black boots and are given their own beds. They are driven in baby carriages down the street. She used to go to a tea party every day of the week. She is not ashamed to admit that now she is addicted to tea. She has spent the past two nights going through withdrawal. One doll named Ella has an eye that falls into the back of her head. You have to shake her violently to get the eye to go back into its place. But she claims that when her eye is in her head, it has visions. She is able to see the little girl who used to own her standing on the back of a bench waiting for a bus. 
she was able to see her wearing a long black coat at her mother's funeral. And then there is a doll whose red jacket and matching trousers have been taken off. Without these, she is almost certain not to be bought. The worst thing is to be a naked doll. She is terrified that she will be mistaken for garbage. The dolls all know how it goes. You are taken home and told you are special. You are defined by being loved. Love exposes you to loneliness. Love gives you a personality, but damages you too. None of the dolls at the rummage sale want to see themselves as trash. Each one knows that once she was special, once she was loved. Yes. Yes. Hi. It's uh, it's 11 a.m. Wow. Yeah. I I oversaw. I think I um. Don't don't mind. I'm just gonna. Wow. Well, I'm just gonna assemble myself a little bit here. Okay. While we talk. Okay. Um. So. Uh, I'm sorry. Just one second. Let me just. Uh, can, can Can I just ask you something? Mm-hmm. Would, would you? I mean, would it be better to be? Doing this in the afternoons. I mean, you suggested. No, 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 no. no. This is uh, this is a good time for me. It's a good time for me. I, I I'm not remotely in between things. I'm I'm a hundred percent yours. Right. Um. I'm a, you know I'm a multitasker, as you know, yeah. as we've discussed. So if I'm you know just sort of moving around the apartment and getting myself ready for the day, I'm no, I'm yours. I'm yours. So right. tell me. Okay. Because. As you remember, I'm sure from the last couple of times we spoke, a part of my issue is I, I just feel like no one's really, you know, listening to me. Yeah, no one's paying yeah, me. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I acknowledge, well, I acknowledge that. And so th- that's why I mean, I'm saying, like, th- this is supposed to be my time. You know, yeah, I hate to be sort absolutely of... Absolutely your time. A- as my life coach, right? Yes, I am. You're supposed to be... I'm you know, paying me. attention also to, to what absolutely. I say. I mean, I feel like whenever I call you, you're just waking up or... You, you know what I mean? Hmm. What, what, what are you? Wow. What are you doing? Um, I, I just took a Tylenol, but you're not supposed to take my empty stomach, so I'm just—I found a bowl of chips on the arm of the sofa. Uh huh. You don't feel listened to. No, that's that's right. Then it's interesting to me that the sounds, the signs that there's another person on the line with you, mm-hmm. would strike you as being not listening. Well, in fact, you can't hear. You don't know that your audience is out there, so you feel there's nobody listening. Mm-hmm. Finally, there's somebody listening, and you feel that he, I'm the name we me, is not listening. Well, maybe, I mean, maybe if you were just listening, but not, maybe not so loudly. Wow. You want listening, but it's, it's not the right kind of listening. Well, I mean, it's, I just want to be listened to. No one wants to lead that life of quiet desperation of uh, not being listened to. It's like, um, hold on, you're just going to hear something, but it doesn't mean I'm not listening. Yeah, you know, that doesn't make me feel listened to. But it should make you feel listened to because I'm listening to you. Anyway, uh, the blending is done. The blending is done. I'm telling you that I don't, I, I, I don't feel like I'm being listened to, you know, because well, of that kind of, you know, it carries over. But maybe something from childhood, you know, I don't, I don't know. I just, huh. I just feel like whatever I'm saying is falling on dead ears. Hmm, that's interesting. But I can't, it's just a big, it's an overwhelming... Overwhelming thing, so even to sort of get out of the bed and go do the sort of morning stretches that we talked about, that would be, that seems insurmountable. I don't remember us talking about morning stretches. We didn't? I didn't send you the pamphlet of Zach's morning stretches? No. A downward dog and sun salutes, it's kind of yoga, it's kind of Gurdjieff movement. I never sent it to you? No, I never, I never got any packet. It's a good, um, it's a good thing, actually. Let me just get your... Address your mailing address one more time, okay. um, and just just so that I have it again, the full proper spelling of your last name is uh, how, how does it spell? It's G O L D S T E I N Goldstein, and mm-hmm. the first initial was um, okay. I've got that somewhere. Okay, 
Do you got that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah do you know my first name? Yes, I do. Why, why does it... Um, you're, uh, I, I'd like to talk about why that's so important to you. My name? Mm, testing me about your name. It seems... Uh, you know, I'm going to be blunt about something. Mm -hmm. It seems to me you want a lot more hand-holding than life coaching is generally known to be giving. That's really funny that you should say hand-holding because that's one of the things that, that, that it says on your website. It said, take my hand. Take my hand. It's different. On your website, it says, take my hand. It didn't mean take your hand and take my hand and take it home with you. I mean, I, I don't... I mean, I'm sorry to, to, you know, to be questioning you in this way, but... Are you in the bathroom? What? No, not anymore. This is... I just wanted to play you something because I think it's very... Um, it's a way I like to wrap up sessions. And it's a, it's a song that means quite a bit to me. Wait, wait, hang on a second. We're wrapping things up right now? Well, I'm a little... Things are a little... Okay, yeah, that's, crazy this morning. Yeah, that's fine. All right. What, what is that? The song? Yeah, what is this you're, what is this you're playing? It's, listen, it's, it's, um, it's a song from a movie called Beaches. Did oh you ever see God. Beaches? Yes, I, no, I haven't seen it's it. It's a very good movie, and this, I think the lyrics are very important, and it's, it's about the way I feel about you, Jonathan, which is, did you ever know that you were my hero? No, I didn't know that. I, I, well, it, it's true. It's not true. Well, you don't even know me. You called me Larry during our last session. No, you called yourself Larry. I, why would I? To, to, to I wouldn't call you myself. You are my hero. You are, you are everything. I don't believe you. I hope to be well. You don't know anything about me. How can you hope to be? Because of the Did you ever know that you're my hero? On Wiretap Today, you heard Gregor Ehrlich, Jane Lewis, Joshua Carpati, Marae Silkoff, David Rakoff, and Heather O'Neill reading her short story, Dolls. Wiretap is written and performed by Jonathan Goldstein and produced by Jonathan Goldstein with Sarah Gilbert and Carolyn Warren. Production help from Mira Bertwin-Tonic.